In this exercise, we're going to be making our first program, and we're going to be following uh, an example that's from the textbook, and this can be found in section 2-2 of your textbook, which starts on page 26. So this is an alternative to following the textbook. Uh, you can follow the textbook, watch the video, you can not watch the video, whichever way, or watch the video, and well, I'd still recommend you having the textbook. Okay. But this is an alternative if you're finding the textbook confusing. So what we want to do is we wanted to uh, write our program here. And uh, I want to talk just very, very quickly about uh, what we call a programming cycle. And basically, a programming cycle is, is what are the steps you need to follow in order to write your own computer programs. And uh, there's basically three big steps that you need. First, you need to design and think about and plan your program. So that's the design stage. Then you need to code. This is where you're actually writing your computer program. And then finally you need to test. And this is a cyclical thing because quite often when you test, in fact more often than not, when you test you'll find that it doesn't work quite the way you want. You need to go back, design, redesign your code a little bit. Perhaps you need to go right back to the beginning and redesign your, uh, your design. And I'm bringing this up because most people tend to jump when they first start into programming right into the coding. They just want to start writing right away. They want to start making their program. And I can understand where this is coming from because in most computer applications that you're used to, that's the way you go. You just kind of dive in and go. It's so easy to fix things as you go along. But when it comes to programming, it's not so easy to fix things. And if you get into the habit of just starting to change this, change that, let's see how it goes without really thinking about it, you're going to get yourself into a lot of problems, a lot of frustrations, and you're going to spend a lot of time. And the way to prevent that from happening is to spend as much time as you can just on the design of thinking it out beforehand, before you do your coding. Um, and then you will spend less time coding, less time testing, and your overall experience will be less frustrating. Okay. First thing in our design is, well, we've got to design the scene, right? And normally, you would actually design the scheme from scratch, but the textbook designed our scene for us, and we have it right here, and you can find this file in the course database if you don't have it on your uh, disk that came with your textbook. So you don't need to design the scene. It's right there for us. It's got all the objects in there that we need. Um, then what we want to do is we want to come up with a plan. And again, the textbook provided ourselves a little plan already, and it's in the form of a storyboard. So I'm, I wrote the storyboard just simply here in, in, in Notepad. So let's make sure we have a good idea of what it is that we want our program to do. So here are our steps. Here's our story that we want to do. And the more detail you can put into these steps, the better. So do the following steps in order. Alien is going to move up. There's an alien behind the rock in the picture. It's going to move up. The alien's going to say, slithy toes. The robot's head's going to turn around. The robot turns to look at the alien. Then we're going to want the robot to move towards the alien, and we're going to get two things that are going to happen at the same time. The robot's going to move, but also we want the robot's legs to actually do some walking. Now, this particular step right here is actually pretty vague. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to get that done. We'll deal with that when we get to it. Again... You know, you do as much detail as you can. Some problems you have to tackle when you get to them. Then the alien is going to move down. Robot's going to turn to look at the camera. Robot's head is going to turn red. And the robot's going to say, Houston, we have a problem. So let's start going through the process of writing this up. So the first thing we want to do is have our alien move up. That's step number one. So we first want this stuff to do together. So what I'm going to do, or do in order Oops, sorry, got the wrong button here. Close that one. <laughs> we want this stuff to happen in order. In other words, it's going to do this, then it's going to do this, then it's going to do this, then it's going to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here. I'm going to drag a do in order block into my code. This is my code window here. All our code's going to happen there. And I can't see my alien because it's behind the rock, but that's okay because I have my object view here. I can click. It's called alien on wheels. And what I want to do is have that alien move up. Down below here, when I select an object, I have three different tabs that I can work with. Properties, methods, and functions. Okay, We're going to talk about each of these, but right now we're interested in methods. And methods are what the object can do. Okay, Things that it can do. And what I want it to do is I want it to move. So the very first one here I see is Alien on Wheels Move. So I'm going to grab this by the bumpy part. I'll zoom in, actually, so people can really see what we're doing. Whoops. There we go. What happened? Oh, I'm, I changed that. Okay, so we got alien. Okay, so we're going to 
select methods, and we're going to go alien move. I'm going to grab it by the bumpy part. I'm going to drag it over into my do in order block. Okay. And then it's going and it's asking me, well, move in what way? And each of these methods have to be provided some details, and these details are what we call arguments. Okay. So what we want to do? Well, first, what direction do we want it to move? We want it to move up. Then how much f do we want it to move? Well, let's start by having it move one meter. Okay, and then I click on that, and it creates that. So I want to take a close look at this method here. So this method is called the move method. The move method is on the alien on wheels object, so it's always going to be an object and then the method, and then after that we get the argument. So I'm going to be using these terms a lot, so it's important that you know what we're talking about. We have the object, the method, move, and then the arguments, which is up in one meter. It's always good to test, make sure things are going the way you want, so I'm going to push the play button. Oh dear. Not sure what happened there, let's restart. Seemed to work fine, okay, and you can see our aliens moving over here on the far right. So it's working okay, it's doing what we say. Next thing we want to do is we want the alien, going back to our storyboard, I keep clicking the wrong thing. Going back to the story part, we want the alien to say slithy toes. So we're still talking about the alien, so alien on wheels. You can see here we have a method called say. We're going to drag that in. We're going to put it right after. Notice the green line, which shows you where you're dragging it to. Uh, we're going to drag, we want it to be right after the move, we say. And we want, well, it's got some default things, hello and goodbye. We don't want to say either of those, so we want to say other. And then we're going to type in there slithy toes. Actually, the textbook has this with a lowercase t, so to match the textbook, I'll do that. And by the way, if you drag these into the wrong places, like, like that, you know, you have things in the wrong spots, they're very easy to move these things around, so don't get too hung up with, you know, it's very easy to modify as you go along. Okay, so what's next in our storyboard? We go back to here. Next step is we want the aliens or the robot's head to turn around. So now we're going to affect the robot object, so we're going to click on spider robot. But we don't want to move the whole robot, we just want to move his head. So i got to select the head, so I click the plus button to get, zoom in here, click the plus button to get whoops, sub parts. Okay, uh, there's body and neck, while well, the head seems to be attached to the neck, so I suspect the head is there, and there it is, so I'm going to select head. And as I select head, notice all these methods change, so now I'm affecting the head of the spider robot. And what do I want it to do? I want it to turn, so I'm going to grab, zoom out, grab the turn method, put it over here. What do I want to turn? Do I want it to turn right or left? It doesn't really say, so I'm going to pick one, I'm going to pick left. I want it to turn one complete revolution all the way around, and I say, there we go. I'm going to test that, see how that's working. So I push the play button. See, alien goes up, says slissy toes, robot head turns. Everything's going so good. I really recommend that you test a lot. Keep doing it over and over and over again. Make sure things are going, because if you find that you did something wrong, but you don't realize it for another 20 minutes, then it's hard to go back and fix it. But if you test after each step, it's really easy to see whether it's doing what you want or not. Now we want the robot to turn right here turn to look at the alien. Now, I could, you know, try and figure out how much of a turn to get it to turn the alien, but that's going to be a pain in the ass. And if you notice, there is, if I scroll down the methods, there is a turn to face method right here. Okay, turn to face. So that's the one I want. But I don't want just the head to turn to face. I want the whole robot to turn to face the alien. So I need to come back, select the whole spider robot, select the turn to face method, drag it into the appropriate place, and then it asks of all the objects that we have here, what do I want them to turn to face? I want to turn to the alien on wheels, and I want them to face the entire alien. So I select that. 